fried chicken wing in Guangdong has to be some of my favorite fried chicken the world over. I mean, lounging at a Dai Pai Dong on a muggy summer night, devouring some fried chicken alongside some world-class kanji, and of course a bit of mijo, has to be pretty far up there as far as fried chicken eating experiences go. So we've been wanting to share this one for a while, but the trouble with this dish is that it is one of those things where there's really not all that much of a clear standard. You see, while Cantonese cuisine has pretty much always had this mind-numbing array of different deep-frying techniques, the idea of eating specifically a chicken wing is a bit more of a modern Western import. After all, the traditional and usual method of chicken consumption in China is based around one entire chicken, freshly slaughtered, cleaved across the bone, not butchered into separate cuts like you'd see in the West. But as Western food inched its way into the Chinese diet, Fried chicken wings, whether from the street or from a Western fast food chain, ended up becoming a sort of perennial kid's favorite. Steph would tell me how when she was growing up, for her, grabbing a bucket of fried chicken with friends was pretty much her go-to way to spend some New Year Hongbao or maybe some Jiang Shui Jin at the end of the school year. And in that, she was far from alone. Of course, today, that post-opening KFC generation in China has grown up. And so, in response, these days, fried chicken wings can be found on menus at late-night Dai Pai Dong scattered throughout the Delta. And while some of these variants could practically be a dead ringer for American Southern fried chicken, others localize, making use of one of the potpourri of Cantonese deep-frying techniques to arrive at something new and unique. So, with that in mind, we want to teach you two versions today. For the first one, we'll be mimicking one of our favorite Dai Pai Dongs in Shunda, a late night spot in Dalian called Lam Chun Dai Pai Dong. The fundamental idea of their approach is to first season the wings with what you could only call a brine, then toss with potato starch, and then fry at a relatively low temperature. This yields very tender wings with a light, crispy skin. Then, we also want to show you another sort, Furu Fried Chicken Wings. For this one, you'll marinate things with a fermented tofu-based marinade, a classic for deep fried dishes in Guangdong, then add a thin layer of egg, followed by the same aggressive toss with starch. This variant will get you a more heavily seasoned wing with a thicker, crunchier coating. So then, first up, that Lum Chun style. Now, before we left Shunda, the owner of that shop graciously taught us how to make these wings, but they did end up electing to keep their specific brine a secret, understandable as those wings are pretty much their bread and butter. So fair warning here that there was a touch of guesswork. The style of brine we ended up going for was a restaurant sort that's used to make stuff like jaji gai, which seemed like a solid fit. To make it, first just grab six full chicken wings, or a similar amount of flats, drumettes, whatever. And then to that, first add in 10 grams of salt, 15 grams of sugar, five grams of chicken bouillon powder, a gram of MSG, and two grams of white pepper powder and mix that well. Then. To that, add in 20 grams each of soy sauce, liao jiu aka shaoxing wine, and fish sauce, which just be aware is more of a restaurant ingredient in Guangdong. Then, to that, just add in about two cups worth of water, or just enough to barely cover it all, and then set that in the fridge for at least 90 minutes or up to overnight. The longer, the more tender. So, then next day, we'll be moving those over to a big basin to coat. But for this, we'll want to bring a bit of the marinade with us to help sort of form a kind of base coating. Now, from a recipe writing perspective, I know that is kind of an awkward practice to standardize. So for ease of replication, we'll be taking a page out of Kenji's book, and we'll first drain the wings, then add them to our basin, then add in two tablespoons of our marinade to mimic that dynamic. Just mix that well, then we'll go in with some potato starch, but doing so bit by bit. At first, we'll just add in enough to form a thin sort of brine slurry to roughly coat the wing. And then once we're at that point, we'll go in with enough starch to be able to basically dry everything out. For reference, we added about one, one and a half cups worth of starch in all. Then just give that all a nice toss, and I like doing this bit outside, and then set that aside. Then, to a walk, fill everything up with about a liter's worth of oil, and then heat that up over a high flame. Then, right before frying, two of those wings go in again with a touch more potato starch, about two to three tablespoons, and give that all a good toss once more. Knock off any excess starch from the wing, add it into the oil, and here we're rolling it around 160 centigrade, 
and I personally like letting that coating on the flat side form for a couple seconds before dropping each in. Then just let those all fry. But dip your flame to medium high because we'll be aiming to fry these around 140 for eight minutes in all. And after that time, then just take those out, let the oil drain off a touch, then toss on a paper towel lined plate. And just like that, the Lumchun style wings are done to the best of our ability. That said, before diving in, a quick disclosure and a quick word on the word crispy. You see, the Chinese language actually has two separate words that can both mean crispy, su and cui. The former is sort of a lighter kind of crispiness that'll quickly melt away in your mouth. Think of a wugok at dim sum, or maybe in the Western context, something like a wafer. The latter is a heavier crispiness that could also be translated as crunchy. Think of something with a real shell to it, like northern style guobao ro, or maybe some American style fried chicken. The lum chun style wings are su, light crispy. But given the YouTube arms race to get as much crunch as feasibly possible anywhere and everywhere, we also wanted to teach you something a bit on the cui side, and the furu sort definitely fit the bill. So, this time we'll be using a mix of flats and drumettes for no real reason, but 10 total in all. Then, to marinate them, just grab one big cube of fermented tofu, toss it in with the wings, also together with one tablespoon of mijo, and you could also sub in sake or shaoxing, one tablespoon of soy sauce, one teaspoon of sugar, a half teaspoon salt, and another half teaspoon white pepper. Take your time to really mush up that cube of fermented tofu. Then just mix that all super well. Cover and toss in the fridge to marinate for at least a couple hours and up to overnight. Then, next day, move your wings over to a big basin. Then to that, first crack in one small egg or a half of one if you got something medium or large. Mix that well, then toss in your starch in the same way as before. Make a thin sort of slurry to coat then keep on adding starch till it's dry. Then just toss to coat and set that aside until you're ready to fry. So again, heat up an oil-filled wok up to 160 centigrade at first. And right before moving those in, give the wings the same final toss with a couple tablespoons of starch. But this time, we'll be frying those a little hotter at around 145 to 150 for seven minutes in total. Then just take those out and if you're feeling so inclined, you can also optionally give those a second double fry to further crisp things up. To do so, we'll heat things up up to 185, dip the wings in for a final 30 seconds, and also feel free to go this route too with the previous ones if you want it. Then just remove, let the oil drain out, transfer over to a paper towel lined plate, and then these furu wings are also done. So uh, furu, fermented tofu with chicken wings, is actually a very classic combo in Cantonese kitchens. And uh, besides deep frying it, you can also steam it, and which may probably be the more common method in home kitchens. So what you can do is first coat it with toasted sesame oil, and then lay it flat on the plate, then put some julienne ginger on it, and then just steam it on high for 10 to 12 minutes. So right, as always, check out the recipe in the description box. A big thank you for everyone that's supporting us on Patreon. And of course, subscribe for more Chinese cooking videos.